is no use. But why can't I defeat you? <laughs> because we're Sonic Heroes. Sonic! Anytime you want a rematch, just let me know. I'll be waiting. Hello everyone, and welcome to our 20,000 subscribers special. One of the biggest requests that I got from the original Joy-Con Drift video was to find a solution for the Pro Controller and the DualSense too. But I didn't have any of those controllers at the time, so I couldn't investigate further. Then I decided to ask for someone with a drifting Pro Controller to sell it to me so that I could look into this problem. And at the time, I started talking with Joe from the channel Fantastic Quack, since he's also very good with fixing those problems. We decided that each one would try to find a fix for these controllers. Joe got a broken DualSense, and he already posted his fix on his channel, so if you have a drifting DualSense, go watch his fix, and give him a help too by subscribing. He's almost hitting the 1000 subscribers mark necessary to monetize his channel. So after posting on the community section, Charlotte and Adam offered me their controller for inspection, which I gladly accepted. Thanks a lot, guys. And after a long wait, the Pro Controller arrived, and it was drifting pretty badly. And another thing that I noticed is that the left analog stick was making weird noises when you moved it while pressing it down. So, check this out, there's something weird going on here. With this button, if you press it and move it around, no weird noises, right? But with this one, not sure if you can hear it. Not pressing, but if you press and move, Hmm. So my first test was to apply pressure, just like I did with the Joy-Cons, and I wasn't surprised this didn't make any difference. I also noted two kind of drift problems. First is that the stick was off-centered, and the second one was when I pressed up. But notice that the drift only happens when I pull the stick away from the controller, not pressing into it. With the controller disassembled, I started to investigate the analog sticks. A weird thing is that the analog stick seems to snap when you put it on the edge. This doesn't happen with other analog sticks. I didn't find any signs of damage on it, but I did find the cause of the weird squeaking noises. See when you press it down and move, this piece here rubs against the button. And I guess that after long playtime sessions, this part gets worn out and start to make these noises. But this is not damaged at all, and can be easily fixed with a little bit of silicon lubricant. And everything on the analog stick seems to be working and in place. You can see that the brand is Alps, the same of the DualSense. Then I turned it on and started messing with the stick. I tried pressing the potentiometer, and still it didn't make any difference. No matter where I pressed or pulled, the drift still happened. Then I found that this middle part made readings change a bit. Perhaps there was something wrong inside?
I opened the potentiometer and there was no visible dirt or damage to the graphite pads. And the metal wiper was also perfectly clean. So we grabbed a q-tip with isopropyl alcohol and wiped the left and right axis to make sure it was clean. After cleaning I tested it again and the drift was still there. Then I tested the up and down axis for the drift and it was still present too. So I did the same cleaning process to the Y axis and tested it again. And the drift on the Y axis was gone. Then following Joe's fix on the DualSense, I tried to bend the metal wipers just a little to make sure it has a good connection with the graphite pads. And after testing it again, the drift was still there. Then I disassembled it again and looked at that middle piece. That hole is where the wiper connects with the analog center piece. And that is responsible to rotate the wiper around to get the proper ratings. So why not use the greatest invention of mankind again? I grabbed the paper from my printer and cut a thin slice of it and put it on the hole like that. And in the other side, I folded it like this. This way, the paper can solve two possible problems. The middle piece being loose over time, and it will also make pressure on the wiper to the contacts on the other side, just like my Joy-Con fix. And look at that, the drift is gone. I reassembled the controller and tested it again just to make sure. And there you have it, you fixed the drift with paper once again. To open the potentiometer, grab a flathead screwdriver and gently pry it from the top. You don't need to desolder the entire analog stick, just slightly bend it and you'll be able to remove the wiper and clean the contacts. Keep in mind that drift can have other sources too, so my advice here is to do some cleaning with isopropyl alcohol and apply the paper strip, and if that doesn't work for you, then you should replace the analog stick. And come on Nintendo, my mailbox is still empty. Did you know that there are controllers that are somewhat drift proof? Check out this video or see my latest product reviews here. And the DualShock 4 is the next on my quest to eradicate drift. Stay tuned to that next video. See you later.